Hello, uh, my name is Eugene. Uh, nice to see all of you today. And uh, let's open Pandora box. Uh, how many people use debugging uh, to log something into log file? Okay, uh, how many people use uh, uh, internal debugger? Right there. Uh, do you use it uh, every day? Oh, time, time to time. Okay. Um, I want to show you uh, my own implementation of debugger. Um, uh, here you can uh, find uh, my first version of it. Uh, here is a uh, recent uh, presentation about this debugger uh, and short link. Uh, <clears throat> but today we will speak about uh, second version, uh, which has uh, more features. It's more actively uh, in more active development. And here is uh, links to some old presentation. So uh, if you want uh, to know uh, more information, you can uh, look them. Uh, so if you didn't use the bugger, uh, before today, uh, you can try. It's uh, not so hard. You just uh, run Perl with minus D flag and uh, set Perl 5 DB environment variable to point uh, your uh, debugger. By default, this variable has uh, 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 what's uh, Perl 5 DB PL. Uh, <clears throat> uh, to load my debugger, uh, you uh, should stop uh, Perl 5 DB to uh, this value. Uh, we will run uh, today Modulicious application in uh, development mode, this is uh, Morbo uh, server. <coughs> so uh, here you can see uh, we adjust our uh, parallel 5 db variable uh, and uh, run our script and debug mode. So, uh, content of uh, this environment variable will be inserted uh, before first line of uh, your script. So uh, the bugger is uh, just uh, usual Perl program. So uh, we see here that application was started and uh, available on this port. So let's make a request. <coughs> oh, and we stopped. Uh, <coughs> the bug session is activated at uh, current uh, uh, shell. No, oh, but if you uh, server runs uh, somewhere remotely, you also connect uh, to the server remotely. Uh, you just uh, do a few adjustions. So you just need to load uh, additional model, which is called remote. And uh, server will be uh, run and remote model. <clears throat> so uh, now you can see that uh, uh, terminal is connected uh, to uh, local 9000 port. So <clears throat> if you do this remotely, uh, you uh, can connect uh, to this port uh, remotely. Uh, to connect, uh, you uh, can use uh, the client, which 
connect to this port, or you can use uh, usual telnet. So you can see uh, we are connected to a uh, remote uh, session. <clears throat> uh, this uh, debugger allows uh, to edit files remotely. So uh, we are inside uh, debugger session. So its server works somewhere. Uh, we can issue GE command. And uh, this file is opened, uh, remote file opened uh, at your editor locally. So we now at this point. <clears throat> uh, to enable this feature, uh, you need to uh, adjust uh, your connect SSH connection to remote host like this. So uh, you should add uh, this configuration into your uh, SSH config file. So here you provide an alias uh, for this connection, your username to connect, uh, host name to connect, uh, some parameters for connections. And mating is uh, local forward. This uh, forwards uh, 9000 port to a uh, remote server. So uh, you uh, connect, still connect locally. You see here, and uh, SSH uh, program will forward this port to remote server. And uh, second remote forward uh, is uh, port forwarding for file editing. So uh, when you are starting to edit file remotely, uh, the debugger will <coughs> uh, send content of file to this port and SSH will uh, send data to your editor. So uh, my editor is Sublime, is uh, it's listening on uh, this port now. So uh, file is opened in Sublime editor. So, uh, usual program, you also can uh, configure it to connect uh, to some remote IP address and port and internet if you prefer. Uh, to debug your program, you uh, need to put dbx uh, into your uh, program. It's this is same as uh, db single one. Let me restart the session. Oops. Uh, so we restarted the server and did request again. Uh, so now we stopped uh, at line 86 uh, and can continue to debug. Uh, debug supports various uh, commands. You can be familiar with them uh, by looking uh, uh, previous presentation, so I will not stop on them today, uh, except uh, two commands. So uh, from now, uh, it's uh, 
I think, very useful feature. We can see a list of uh, our stack frames with uh, their context, what was called, which, which arguments was called. And most important thing, you can look code at uh, previous stack frame. So list zero, it's current point, and list minus one, this is uh, how your current function was called. So it was called from this file, from this line. So we can continue. We can show previous frame, previous, previous, and until then. So um, how do you think? Is it useful to see code at previous stack frame? Yeah. OK. But uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, also we, uh, we can uh, not just list previous frame, we can list uh, by file name, file number, by uh, uh, subroutine name. For example, if we use this format, list, impressant, modulicious, build controller. So uh, if you use uh, impressant, form, uh, you can list uh, the compiled function. So uh, this is function, how Perl sees this function. So here, uh, we can see that uh, this function uh, has some features enabled. Uh, we see uh, priority for each command. So, um, you can list uh, function uh, by uh, its reference. So uh, sometimes uh, when you have uh, reference to use a broutine, you can look what, uh, what is this function. For example, let's assign this function to some variable. Example one. So if you have a reference to function, here you can see uh, oops. Some deeper. Okay. Strange. <laughs> Some typo? Let me hit from scratch. Ah, okay. Yes. Maybe example one. Delicious build So list.
so here or uh, the compiled version here even like this So this is uh, usual version, and how Perl sees this version. So we see it's uh, some optimization was applied to this function. Oh, uh, another useful uh, feature, uh, you can spy variables at any stack frame. So here we can see uh, which variable adds well from this stack frame. Minus one, uh, this is previous stack frame. Another previous, oh, for example, list second frame and we can see that here only one variable is available whereas here um, if we want we can change uh variables online so we uh now stopped if you want to change uh variable we just assign new value to it like this, we see that variable is changed. Um, another killer feature uh, to my mind is uh, when you stopped, uh, you can create a nested debugger session. For example, uh, you know uh, that this function returns some unexpected values. So uh, without restarting application, uh, sometimes it could take a couple of minutes to restart everything from scratch. Uh, you just uh, run this function. With desired uh, values. For example. We run and see this uh, result, and we understand that this result is not correct. So we can uh, call this function with different parameters. So we think uh, that this parameter should be correct. So, uh, if we uh, understand that uh, expected parameters returns not expected results, we can try uh, to debug this function from this debugger session. So, uh, now we use D command, and uh, here we see that uh, debugger session is nested. So, we continue uh, debugging step into. Step into, step into. Uh, even we can uh, go through go to frames. 
step into and so on. So how it really, uh, will be useful to uh, see variables at different stack frames and uh, uh, have ability to change them. So do you see uh, where you can uh, use this? Okay. Uh, oh. Another useful command is uh, A. This is short for action. So you can uh, put these actions, uh, apply uh, this action to any uh, line and uh, run any program or any action. So you can uh, stop only at some point of your program uh, when you meet uh, your expected value. Or you can uh, write some log information. But everything uh, is this uh, without restarting application, which uh, can have matter when your application is loaded uh, not so fast, for example, one or two minutes. Sometimes uh, you meet situation when you have some global state and you don't understand what is changed, uh, which part of program uh, changes this. Uh, to spy, uh, you can trace uh, access to your variables. For example, uh, if you know a uh, modulicious application, Um, you know about uh, stash. So this is a special hash which exists from uh, the time when request is received by application and uh, until process, um, until request is processed. So uh, now we want to uh, spy what is uh, happening with this stash. Trace variable. Oh, and now go. Oh. So here you can see uh, uh, each access to this stash. So uh, here we can see that uh, module rendered uh, key was accessed from modulicious line 112. So its value undefined. We can trace. Uh, how these values uh, are changed. So here we can see that module log was undefined on line 209 and uh, then its value was changed from undefined to some value. So you can see uh, uh, how this stash initialized. Uh, now we stopped uh, at uh, our controller's action. And uh, here we are going to uh, issue response. So uh, if I write go command, uh, we will run command to the end. And let's uh, server to uh, generate response. So uh, after our controller is finished, we can see uh, how this stash uh, is changed. So how it's filled. Here's some timings about process and 
So we can uh, fully understand what happened. It's not implemented, uh, but uh, I have an idea how we can uh, trace variables. So if we uh, stopped at some point and we see unexpected value, uh, we can issue some command and uh, this command will show uh, how this value was calculated. So it will show that, uh, for example, it, uh, this value was concatenated uh, from some constant part with uh, some part uh, which was queried uh, from database. <laughs> so, uh, debugger command already. So, uh, uh, so does somebody uh, try to extend uh, internal debugger? So, uh, don't try, it's hard. Uh, if you uh, try to change it, uh, you don't have any debug tools. And if something goes wrong, uh, debugger just hold and uh, you cannot understand uh, why. Uh, this, uh, my uh, implementation of debugger allows to debug itself. So you can put debugger point inside uh, debugger and it will recursively uh, start itself. So uh, here I want uh, to show uh, how to implement uh, command to trace which modulus will load it. So here we just uh, declare a package. This is subroutine which uh, shows what was loaded. And here we uh, subscribes to uh, some debugger event. To load uh, this module, you just need to add this part uh, to uh, uh, Perl DB, uh, Perl 5 DB variable, like this. Here. So uh, when we inside debugger, this is uh, something different word. So uh, instead of uh, dbx, uh, we will use db stop. And this is condition when we want to stop. So uh, now we are inside debugger. If we uh, list our stick frames, uh, we can see that from zero. Uh, this is uh, stack frames for our application. And here in the beginning, this is uh, stack frames for uh, our debugger. So we can see that we inside it. Uh, so, uh, when you want to extend debugger, you can easily uh, debug it. Uh, here uh, in this uh, module, uh, I um, save uh, information to uh, files. So uh, when program completes its execution, we can uh, see here newly generated file with information about what is loaded and uh, which model it was loaded. 
So uh, after this, we can copy this information. to analyze the program and then uh, generate uh, some graph in graph with format. And from that we can uh, generate some image. Uh, so <clears throat> Yeah, refresh. So uh, you can easily understand uh, which modules are loaded and uh, from which space. So uh, for our modulicious application, it looks like this. So main module is loaded server, server loads uh, fine bin, loads module server and so on. So you can uh, analyze uh, de dependencies uh, for your applications. Um, <clears throat> I have a similar idea for uh, function calls, but this is not implemented yet. Uh, as a result, uh, I will generate uh, some uh, SVG file, uh, which will show uh, functions uh from which place they was called uh, how many time it uh, took uh, how many times it was called so we can uh, get graphs similar right, like this this is a site for uh, analyzing uh, uh, postgres uh, explain uh, queries, but we can do similar for our functions. So uh, we can see whole picture, uh, how request came to our application, which function was called and uh, how many times it take. So uh, you can see that uh, implementation something new. It's not not so hard. So uh, so how to debug the bugger? I already showed. Right, probably in more details. Repeat this process. So we are inside our functions. We can see uh, variable uh, values. Here the is uh, file name of loaded module. <laughs> no, for example, stash, we have this value, we can change it with something different. Oh. We continue uh, uh, to run our application with uh, changed values. So we are inside constructor, 
I, if you don't like plus, we can change it. So we see here that it has a different package name. So, and so on. Uh, this is a sh not full list of people uh, whose answers uh, uh, very helped me uh, while I implemented this uh, my debugger. So, uh, your questions uh, you can ask. Uh, oops, directly uh, to uh, on Telegram, or you can post uh, your questions on uh, this. Uh, repository. So, have you any questions? Uh, please uh, ask slowly and loud, loudly. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, uh, uh, in repo only first version. This is second uh, version uh, of the bugger, which not available uh, to public. And uh, this information uh, is just, we see uh, what is loaded from which model. From this information, we, uh, with help of uh, this analyzer program, uh, generate load file, which looks like this, uh, also similar. Uh, so uh, which module from which place was called? And based it on this information, uh, dot program uh, generates uh, SVG file. So uh, instead of uh, log something uh, into file, restart application, see uh, changes, uh, again, restart application, see changes, uh, try uh, to not waste time. Uh, just uh, try to use debugger, even uh, internal debugger, which helps you uh, to understand your program better without wasting time to restart applications. So, thank you.